Modern Shanghai is one of the world's most glittering cities. But old Shanghai has its own amazing history and beauty too. Today, I'm going to give you a taste of both. Join me for an insider's look at fabulous Shanghai. Next on Martin Yen's China. This is modern Shanghai, the towering skyscrapers of the new Pudong area, and this is the famous Bun, the old financial center with its grand European-style architecture, left over from the city's colonial past during the 19th and the early 20th century. Right here in the shadow of all that is another part of Shanghai that outsiders rarely see. It is one of the city's many old neighborhoods. That are really more like little villages, right in the heart of the city. Shanghai is old, and Shanghai is new, and Shanghai is modern and also very traditional. Shanghai is a city of contrast. Ah, Xu Da Zhen, you're good, you're good, you're good. This is Mrs. Xi, my good friend. Every time I come to Shanghai, I come and visit her. Ah, Xu Da Zhen, you live here in this area, the environment is good. Yes, good. You've lived here for many years. Yes, good. Wow, Mrs. Xu has been living here for many, many years. Look at that. You know, they wash, look, you can tell from the washboard. You can tell from the washboard, this is very, very old. She's been using it for many, many years. Truly antique, of course. This is more antique than her. And she's going to show us around. You know, she's retired. And then every morning she go to do exercise, Tai Chi. Mrs. Xu told me, the people have been living here for many, many years. This is an old neighborhood. People actually, it's a living quarter for many, many people. Look at the building, uh, since 1920s. Hey, look at the mailbox. Mrs. Xu's mailbox is full. The mailbox, her mailbox is full. She lives around here, Chang Lu, Er Si Qi Long. Wow, this is where she lives. This is the address in Chinese. They said living here is very comfortable because yeah, very quiet and people are very nice and friendly. Hundo, hundo, very many, many years. And people actually do all the prepping, all the prepping right here. Look at that. Hey, look at this. She, this is her stuff. Now, you know, you wash all your stuff here, huh? Wash all your stuff here, and then you cut all your stuff here, huh? Huh? Cut all your stuff here. Now, this is one thing. Look at this. Uh, I'm going to help her out a little bit. See, see. So, big, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, this is good, good, good. This is good. In the neighborhood, you can shop, you can have your hair cut, you can have a little, a little coffee, and everybody, all the people. This good neighborhood. This neighborhood power. Oh, this is good. It has to be heavy. Is that has to be heavy? You know, a lot of people don't realize orange is a symbol of good fortune. It's because in the color, in the color of gold. I told you this is a city of contrast. Well, it is time for another one, from Mrs. Shear's humble kitchen to the professional restaurant kitchen of another great cook. Both women, both here in old Shanghai. This is the old Shanghai restaurant. And the name is no exaggeration. It has been here for more than 130 years. I put my chef jacket to learn from the restaurant's master chef. She has been working here for 27 years. With me is chef, master chef Tang Hongfang, Tu Shi Zhang. Today, she's going to show us how she turns three main ingredients into a beautiful, elegant presentation. I call chef Tang the shredder because her signature, Brace Three Shreds, is all about her masterful shredding technique. There will be three different ingredients, ham, bamboo shoot, and chicken breast. This is a famous ham from this area. You cut into very thin slices, one, one group. And then you put it in this little cup. There's a mushroom inside. You cover this with the mushroom right in the middle. 
and then you line them up. Thinly sliced bamboo shoot. You slice from the top so you can control the thickness. Look at how thin this is. And then once again, thinly slice. Total concentration, very important. A lot of skill. And then you put the bamboo shoot in between the hem. Finally, shredded chicken breast. By the time she finished cutting this, add it all together, it will be 1,999 slices. Almost 2,000 slices. This is the measure of your skill. Inside there, there's a hole. You've got to fill it up. Fill it up with pork. The pork, lightly pink. Also thinly shredded. More bamboo shoot. And then you mix this together. You see, mix them all up. You fill it up like this. You press it, fold it in. The chicken breast is cooked, the ham is cooked, and the bamboo shoot is ready to eat. So you only have to steam it for approximately 10 minutes. Let's take a look at it and steam it for 10 minutes. Ah, you steam for 10 or 20 minutes. All you have to do is steam for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now look at this, look at this. Put it upside down. And then put the soup right here. Ah. Hold on to the wok. Use a chopstick, push the mushroom down. Ah, success. Mm, look at this magnificent, delicious banquet. It represents the new and the old of Chinese cuisine. Some of these are traditional dishes. This is a very old fresh water shrimp, poached in oil, very lightly seasoned, braised tofu with crab roll. Ah, this is egg precious duck. Very, very nice. This is a very, very new dish, definitely. Steam, three shredded, ham, bamboo shoot, and chicken, and in a nice clear broth. This is very light and very healthy. Now let's dig in and try. I will also try some of these. If you love Shanghainese cuisine, this is the place you have to come. Today I'm going to show you how to do a classic Shanghai dish. Normally they call the lion's head meatball. We make it a little bit more exciting. We call it the dragon and lion head meatball, inspired by my travel and meet and work with a lot of master Shanghai chef. Okay, here, look at this. I have some napa cabbage. I'm going to show you, and you cut the napa cabbage like this at this angle. Look at that, and then I am going to trim this a little bit at this angle. I'll trim a little bit, and I put this right here. Don't, don't waste anything. Put this in soup, napa cabbage soup, with all kind of stuff. And then I remove this also, and put it in soup. Waste nothing. So that way, I have a whole bunch of pieces like this, about the same size, see? I'm gonna put them all over here. The same thing with the baby bok choy. You see this? I want to cut this in half, okay? And I cut it in half, and then trim this right in half. So you have beautiful bok choy like this. You see that? Look how beautiful this is, okay? And then we're gonna use this also to do, put in our dragon and lion's meatball, okay? Now, we have all of this cut up and we are ready. And I'm heating up some oil over there, okay? And then the next thing I wanna show you how to make the meatball, very interesting. Normally, you just, you can use any ground meat, ground pork, ground beef, ground lamb, ground chicken, ground turkey, everything is fine, okay? And I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny bit of egg wash. If you are concerned about cholesterol, only use egg white, okay? Put a tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of pepper, tiny bit of cornstarch, and a tiny bit of five spice powder. Ha, ah, look at that. It's a mixture of star anise, clove, fennel, and citron peppercorn, and cinnamon, okay? Make sure this is nice and ready. We wanna make it unique, okay? We wanna make it very different. 
Here, I wet my hand with a tiny bit of oil, okay? Of course, I wash my hand, okay? And then, I make the little shrimp ball like this. Look at this. I make the shrimp ball like this, and I squeeze it, and I go like that, and I have a little ball like this, okay? A little shrimp ball like this, and I squeeze it in, and I whoop, another ball like this, okay? Very nice. And then we're gonna shape this also into a ball. And I squeeze, and I squeeze, and I ball out like that, okay? A whole ball. And then I flatten this up, make it into a nice ball, okay? Pack this, no air inside. And I flatten this a little bit, flatten this a little bit, flatten this a little bit, and I put this I put this little ball right in the middle. Look at that, how unique, huh? And then I fold this up, and I fold this up like this, and I fold this up, and I fold this, and I fold this. You know what? I have the whole thing, okay? Look at that. And then you put a tiny, tiny bit of cornstarch right here, and you coat this with a tiny bit of cornstarch and set aside. That means you can actually do this ahead of time. And this is ready. And I will deep fry this until they're nice and golden brown. Now, normally you make four, but since four is not a good luck number in many parts of Chinese culture, in many parts of China and in traditional Chinese culture. So, we do not use four. We make five of these. While you're deep frying that, use low heat, put a tiny bit of oil, not much, okay? I put a tiny, tiny bit of green onion, ginger, a lot of ginger, love ginger. Ginger is healthy. In fact, many parts of Asia, particularly the Chinese and the Indonesian, when they get a cold, when they get a little fruit, hey, they drink ginger tea, very healthy. And then we put the vegetable, we we'll braise the vegetable, okay? We we'll braise the vegetable. One, two, three, four. Line them all up like this, okay? Line them all up. Mmm, beautiful. Beautiful, okay? Line them all up like this. And then also do this. Also put on the side, okay? Just line them all up on one side. And then, ah, broth, broth. Oh, let it braise, let it braise. A tiny bit of wine, I love wine. You can dry, use dry sherry, Shanghai style dish. Classic Shanghai dish, use a lot of Shaoxing wine, okay? And a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. Tiny bit of sesame seed oil. And I put this over here, and I put a tiny bit of soy. Ah, look at it. And then when this meatball is done, we shut it off and we transfer the meatball. Look at this, beautiful. Golden brown meatball, one. Golden brown meatball, two. Okay? And golden brown meatball. And we just let it, huh? Look at this, beautiful. We just kind of let it brace. Next, the new face of Shanghai. This is Shanghai one of the most dynamic cities in the world. And if you want to get a real taste of what makes this place so special, you have to try the local food, especially the world famous Shanghai Juicy Dumplings. Ah, almost here, almost here. <laughs> Ring or shine, always align. This is the Nan Chang Xiao Long Bao. This is the famous Shanghai Juicy Dumpling. There's always a long line. Ah, almost my turn. It looks like the order I have placed is ready. So I'm gonna take you into the kitchen and check it out, okay? Look at this, mass production by hand, not by machine. Mmm, ground meat and some crab meat and crab roll and all kind of seasoning. And then, pleat it, pleat it, pleat it. Mmm, another one. Fill it in, pleat. Pull and pleat and pull, and your left thumb push the filling inside. Hey, not bad, huh? This one I make. 
I've been around, hanging around here for about 25 minutes. And they make about 25, and I make approximately one or two. But it's not bad. Huh? Now, all these little treasures need is a quick steam bath. Hey, this is behind the scene. Look at that. Chinese fast food, they steam all of those over here. They steam all the stuff in this bamboo steamer here. This is already made. It's going to be steamed. Steamy hot. 12 of them in one basket. This is the original Chinese fast food, okay? This is the one that I just prepared. A tiny bit of uh, local dark vinegar. And I'm going to buy into this and check it out to see whether I did a good job. Hmm? Mm. So good. I am speechless. And that's only half the story of Shanghai, the classic side. The modern western side of the city is just as exciting. And when it comes to food, it is filled with surprises and influences from all over the world. This is Xin Tian Di, one of the most popular, most chic places in Shanghai for shops and fine dining. I'm going to one of the hottest east-west restaurants in town, T8, to see what my friend, the Australian Chinese master chef Patrick Deng, is cooking up. So I've got the beautiful tandoori uh, spice yeah. crust here. Chef Patrick is going to show us how he makes one of his creative signature dishes. What, what are you going to show us today? Well, I think summer is coming up, so uh, we'll probably do a summer foie gras dish. Summer foie gras? Why do you call it summer foie gras? Not well, because it involves Caribbean flavor there. It's got like a cocoa and date dressing and it's got pineapple. Chef Patrick is a master of combining Western and Asian ingredients to create something completely new and special. He sears the foie gras in a hot pan. Then he starts composing the plate with a bit of arugula puree, like a painter filling a blank canvas. A piece of caramelized pineapple, the foie gras, and his exotic sweet dressing made with cocoa, coconut, and Chinese red dates. A few slices of cured duck breast a strip of carrot and a delicate pineapple foam. This is a classic example of using a uh, Chinese Asian ingredient and taking put them all together and come up with something your type of a signature dish. Look at how beautiful this is. Huh? Look at this. Here at the T8 restaurant, the general manager Walter is also a chef. You cannot be more international than this. We have a master chef from Switzerland put on a traditional Chinese dress. And on my left, it is an Australian Chinese master chef uh, putting onto a Western apron. Isn't it amazing? Preparing the best of international cuisine. So let's eat, let's dig in. Sure. Yeah. You know what? I like the texture contrast. The flavor is very mild and yet very delicate. Mm, I'm going to try this. How long has this restaurant have been here? It's open over six years. Six years? And, um, same location? Same location yeah. and has grown over the years and it's fully booked almost every night. Fully booked every night. Well, I'm glad that I know you and Chef Patrick, but I don't have to weigh online. It all has to flow together from the design to the food, to the service, to the uniform. So it's a lot of Chinese elements, but very modern and presented in an international way. So this is fresh ingredient prepared with elegance and also simplicity. You probably have noticed, I'm eating with my knife and fork in China. Ah, this is amazing. Rather than using chopstick, forget it. This is much more efficient. Mm. Once again, oil. Thank you. I toast to you. Toast to you. Continue success. Shanghai has always been a place where cultures meet and mingle. And you can really taste it in the food. From classical cooking to cutting edge creativity, it's truly one of the most dynamic and delicious cities in the 21st century. 
I can smell the Shaoxing wine, mm, vapor, aroma. I think it's almost ready. Whoa, beautiful. For those who love hot and spicy food, hey, how about some chili garlic sauce, huh? No problem. A little bit of chili garlic sauce and put it right along where the liquid is and let it bring to a boil, okay? And then I'm going to remove this. I'm going to get a plate and get ready to serve, okay? Get a plate right here, beautiful plate. Look at that, private collection. And then I will get the vegetable, line up. Beautiful, nice and done. Line up the vegetable, line this all up. Line up the vegetable, beautiful. This is amazingly sweet and crunchy. You don't want to overcook the Napa cabbage, okay? This is gonna be really good, okay? And then, last piece. Then what you do is, you line them all up, line them all up, line them all up, and then you line up this on the side, okay? The baby bok choy, line it on the side. This is gonna be good on the side, okay? Oh, very nice. Just enough to line up everything. Beautiful, okay? And then I put the meatball right around here. Look at this. This is the dragon. And lion meatball. Look at that. When this is done, I'll put it over here and I thicken the sauce and really, really huh? thicken the sauce a little bit with a tiny bit of cornstarch. Mm. See, you don't want to waste this. This is really flavorful, okay? Just the right consistency, the right sauce is all you need. Mm. Beautiful, look at that. And make sure you know, get a little a big spoon. This is nice wine flavor, hot and spicy. Bring this to a boil. Always make sure the cornstarch is cooked. We take it over here and we're gonna show you how easy, how wonderful it is to serve. See, I have four meatball here, okay? Four happiness, and a run right on the top. Four is not good luck number. I cut this open. Let me show you how beautiful this is. Look at this, look at that. And then I put the sauce right on top. Mmm, ah. This is a lion's head, classic Shanghai dish with a little twist made in my own kitchen. And this is a beautiful rendition. And then I put a couple of this deep fried wonton on one side and a couple of this chili on the other side and everybody can enjoy. Put a tiny bit of sesame seed and this is all you need. The dish is done. Look at that. Hey, dragon and lion meatball, Shanghai style. If Yan can cook, Shanghai style, so can you. And Jajin.